This is an introduction to doubles tactics, one up, one back. server serves and the returner tries to get the ball away from the net person. That's your primary goal. The net person tries to get to the ball and hit the ball between the two players. So off the serve, the returner must get the ball either to one or two. One being the alley, two being the far cross court. One is tough is to change direction. The net person is present at a higher net at that position. So this is a tough shot to hit. Two is safer. You're going to go over the short part of the net, the longer distance, and there's no one there except the person on the baseline. So there's, there's no chance of someone intercepting their shot and hitting a volley. So the primary goal as a returner is get the ball away from the net person, get it back to a deep person. Now the netman has two options here. Go to one, the short angle, or to the larger target. One is harder. You don't want to hit at people because they, they might get the ball back in play and you might be out of position. Generally speaking, most people go to two because it's a larger target between two people. But one is also a guaranteed put away. Depends on what you can do. <laughs> now, once you have to return away from the net person, what do you have to do? Here's a serve. Returner must get the ball away from that person. It does not be a big shot, it has to be away from that person. Now that person, the person receiving has a couple options. One's the safest, cross court. Two is a short distance, it's a change in angle, and there's someone there. Three is lob, it's kind of a tough shot. You kind of have to have the ability to hit the lob or the person down the line. So generally speaking, most people try to hit the ball back to the person, hitting the return, away from the net person. That's all you have to do. When you're at net, you want to try to get to the ball and put the ball between the two of them. Get the ball back deep, cross court, that's all you have to do. It doesn't have to be big, it doesn't have to be away from the net person. Notice the movement of the people in net, they move back and forth with the ball. That's what's supposed to happen when the ball gets to the net person. Keep it cross court. That person is waiting for the ball. He moves in. Now he has three options. So the one, two, or three. One between them is also going to be the larger target. It's two is a little bit more steep from an angle. And three is a chain is going back in the chain direction opposite way. That's a tough reverse angle. So generally speaking, just hit it hard between them. If you go at people, they might get the ball back in play. They'll throw up the point off. So whenever you hit the ball as a net person, try to hit the ball between them, put it away from a short angle. Depends what you can do. So whatever you can do, figure it out. Throw a person, away from net person, away from net person, net person, and hit the ball to you, and right between them. So once you go away from net person to return, you must keep it up. If you do change direction and go down the line, passing that person you have to hit it hard enough so that person can't put the volley away between the two of you. What happens if you fail to put the ball away? Yeah. A lot of things happen here. Right? Here's a serve. You want to get a high percent of the first serves in because most people attack second serves. Pops it up to that person. Now the opponents no, know where to cover the hole where he should hit. They should hit between him. He should hit between them. The person in the black covers alley. The other person covers the other alley. But they both try to cover the middle ball. It's a backhand. It is kind of hard to put the backhand away. Now, what can he do? He can go one, three, or two. One down the middle solves the rhythm because it's the biggest target. Two is the longer distance. Three is a big angle change. The high net, short distance, but it depends what you can do. Most people play down the middle, number one, and that forces you, forces two people to converge on the ball. But it's the lowest part of the net, it's the biggest target. If you aim that number one down the middle and you're a little bit off, it'll still probably go in. 
You aim for two or three, and you're a little bit off left to right, it might go wide. He goes over there with the pop up. Now the middle shot is easy because look at the look at the distance between two people. Biggest target, no person in the way to get, there's no person in the way to get the ball back. So you always want to try to play between two people, assuming that the bit between two people is in the middle of the court. So you have the biggest target. So the net person fails to put it away, continue with the same policies. Oh. Go that person. Oh. For the hole between them. The key to doubles is to hit the open spaces between people. So there will always be an open space between two people and the space on the left and right. Back, you always want to try to hit away from the net person. It's your primary goal. When it comes to two at net, there's a different formula for success. Hit the ball away from the net person. Hit the ball away from the net person. Short ball coming into net. Where's it hit the ball? One's the longest distance. Two is ideal down the middle, and three is a short distance, but you have a high net. In this situation, two is a little harder because there's two people there. If you hit too close to the guy at net, he might hit it between you. So ideally, you want to play one, so you're only playing one person, that one person gets the ball, there's no interference with the partner. Whenever you're playing, you're going to hit the longest distance, the farthest away from you. Notice a shift by the guy in the green. The ball goes wide, you go wide. Shot goes wide, you go wide, you cover alley. He's hitting between them again. Isolation on the forehand, crossover, hits the middle. Now, when you're at the net, it steals time. The opponent has less time to react. There are a lot of options now, because we're two at, two at net, playing one up and one back. Whenever you play one up and one back, the space in front, space between, space to the right or left. If you play two people at the net, there's no space in front. It opens up less options. Drop shot. Tough shot to hit. Playing net is an acquired skill. Now, there's always going to be three targets. Find out works for you. There's always going to be a space in the middle. Space on the left, a space on the right. Middle shots are always high percentage because it's the highest part of the net, largest target. If you aim down the middle and you're off a little bit left to right, it might still go in. If you aim for a corner and you're a little bit off to the left, it might go out. That's why everyone says down the middle solves the riddle. Also, it might create some confusion between two players and that will open up the corners. serve, get the ball away from that person, and that person get to the ball. Ball comes back to you, here are your options. You can trade, you can also play through people if you have a weapon shot. So you can go to one, the farthest distance, two between them, three, the short distance of court, higher net. But it depends what you can do. Once you're in, you can play down the line and play closest to you. Close to close, deep to deep. If your forehand is stronger than your volley, you play their forehand to the person closest to you. This is a little bit more aggressive, it's not so social, it's more competitive, but it's tennis. It's not personal, you're not aiming at them. But if they good volley, if he had a good volley, he could easily put the ball between them. Guys in trouble, play close to close. Depends what you can do also. <laughs> With four people on the court, people get in the way. So close close means you're balanced inside the court and hit the closest person. Deep to deep means you're off balance, you're off position, you're surprised, you can hit to the farthest person so you can recover. If you hit to the farthest person away from the net, you and your partner have time to recover. There's 
time for you to plan the next shot. Your opposition hit the ball someone at the net. There's no time to recover to hit the ball away from you. So close to close and deep to deep is an offensive competitive strategy. Now let's put it into action as we watch the point. What's supposed to happen now? Serve the returner and you should return away from the net person. The partner with the white hair watches the net person on the other side to make sure that he, the, his partner didn't hit the net person. If he hits the net person, the person will hit him. So you check off. This is the first thing. You always check off your opponents to whoever's closest to you to see where the ball is going. Try not to look at your partner. You might want to look at your partner to see if in trouble. Now it switches. Number one is ready for the player about to hit the ball. Number two is watching number one to see what happens. If the ball goes to number one, the player number one, if he's playing close to close, he will hit the ball at player number two. This is where you gotta check off and anticipate what's gonna come up for the next shot. Off the shot, player one checks out to number two. Player two is watching the ball as it's about to be hit. You all worry about where the ball is, but player one has to watch out for number two. Number two poaches, he can hit the ball to whoever's closest to him, he with the ball at number one. Or between them. So that's why as player one, your responsibility is to watch the player net, the player closest to you to see what he's going to do with the ball, that way you can try to get the ball back in play. This kind of eye movement is very important. Sometimes if you turn around and look at your partner, you lose his time. You don't want to turn around and look at your partner. He turns around a lot. Okay, ball behind him. Player one and three are looking and following the ball. Player two now has to check off on both people. You have to worry about number one and number three because they're both at the net and they're both in the same place. So they're both kind of close to the ball. Generally speaking, you look at one first and three. One first and three, but you have to look for both. If any of them close in the net, like there's a high ball coming, then player two must back off. That's why when you come to the net, it's very effective because it, it makes it harder for the player two to respond. What to do here? They're both at net. What do you do? Who do you hit to? You have a forehand. There's lock. Okay. Watch the reaction of the player as he tracks the ball and moves back. He's, he's overcoming and moves back right there. They're not really in. He shouldn't have lobbed. That's why people want you to come in next to it. You can take time and Now as a player, you always watch who is closest to you. But when you have two of them up at net, you have to split your time between either player. Now we add the switch. Final part, playing one up and one back. Simple doubles. Put the ball away. Lock goes over your head. Switch. Let's break down what happens. Remember, officer, what's well, your first job? Get the ball away from that person. Can you go close to close? Both players one and two are tracking player number three. Say where the ball is going. The net player is tracking player one because he's closest to him. Then that's worry about two. Two's in the baseline. If three hits to one, the net player has to be ready for it. That's what you gotta watch out for now. Get in the habit. Don't look at the guy behind you as about to hit the ball. Only look to see if your player's in, your partner's in trouble. Check off on one. Player one and two are looking at three to see what's to You have to read the racket. Where the racket goes, the ball will go. He's coming in. There's a pop up. Now the ball is going to one. Player two will intercept it. This is perfect because what happens in this situation is if both players think player one's going to hit the ball, they're not prepared for player two. You always want to try to poach and get to that ball. This element of surprise will create confusion and disrupt the coverages, and you might win the point. But he hits it right to the player in the baseline. And he hits it a little bit away, but not far enough away. This is what you want to see happening, right? You want to try to put the ball away, but if your partner at net is failing, player one now must cover all the back. Player two is really far in, and he's in the center. So player one has to cover his side and the entire back. He has to throw a lob. Oh, throw a lob! Then the switch. So player two will cross over, player one will cross over. Because player two has no chance on his lob, he's too close to the net. Player one must get the lob. But if he stays there, he's going to be in the way of the shot. He has to move or he's in the way of the shot. Now the coverage has been reset. White here is going to hit the ball and get in. Hit to whoever's deepest. 
the ball for get get the ball away from that person. We're all following the same rules. And dismisses. So we talked about watching people close to you. Keep the ball deep when you're on defense. In the one up and one back, the server must get the ball away from that person. And the net person tries to get the ball. You all try to hit between people, down the middle, solves the riddle. You have to master one up and one back. You have to play the zones away from the people because you always have the middle zone and the two side zones. There are no shortcuts. You must master one up and one back. You must master the checkoffs. Even if you learn how to serve in volley and your partner comes, both, both of you come up to net, you might play a team that plays only one up and one back. There's a different way to play them than play another team that comes up to net. Mastering one up and one back is the first fundamental step in playing doubles. And the secret is just keep the ball for the net person, look for the hole between people. If you're a net person, put the ball away between people. And hopefully that's an introduction to simple, simple doubles.